Old Testament, there was always the sound of an alarm. And we're sounding an alarm today for Manhattan to awaken and to rise. We've been asleep too long. Yeah. And we refuse to sit idle any longer and let things happen in our city that's against the word of God. So we're calling and we're praying and we're believing that the people of God are going to step up today and do something new. Go ahead and stand on your feet because we serve an unkind God. A God is not there and believing us right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to take just a few moments for a, a quick moment of silence as we remember those that have passed, those that are living with and affected by HIV and AIDS, not only in our Manhattan community, our K-State community, the state of Kansas, the United States of America, and this entire globe. And with that, I would also now like to take, take a moment to actually express the joy of celebrating their lives in the loudest noise you could possibly make. From a legal perspective, it amends the city's non-discrimination codes to include sexual orientation and gender identity as protected classes in regard to employment, housing, and public accommodation. We are not confused by the suggestion that this proposal is for the protection of all people. It is in fact for the creation of special rights granted through the extension of the revered and powerful protected class that has been created for our African American brothers and sisters and is now being considered, uh, for being proposed for homosexuals, bisexuals, and transgender. It's a very simple thing that we have to remember. We have to remember that there is variety in this world, that there is a place in it for each and every one of us. With that comes faith, with that comes love, with that comes acceptance. Um, my, my roommate will be up in that room right now praying for my soul. Um, and I know that's okay because we're allowed to have differing viewpoints. We walked to the union together, he walked upstairs, I walked down. It's okay. We will not back down until he hears us and he changes this culture. Because you know, it's not just about an ordinance. It's about a heart problem. Come on. And we've got to get to the heart. We've got to love enough to see homosexuality become unthinkable. That's what we want it to be, unthinkable, because we're going to love them into the kingdom. Remember when you are oppressed, and when you find other people who are oppressed, stand with them and make the oppression stop. Make the oppression stop. We all understand that there is ridicule against homosexuals that can sometimes lead to depression and even suicide. This ridicule occurs in many pockets of society, and it is wrong. But this proposal has nothing to do with name calling or other forms of ridicule that might be found in the bars of Aggieville or the hallways of our public schools. This proposal instead has to do with employment, housing, and public accommodation. I do commend the local proponents for their honest acknowledgement that granting so such special rights to homosexuals uh, does in some manner infringe religious freedom. But then of course they believe that rights based on sexual preference or identity should always trump rights based on religion. And in fact, their national leaders go on to boast that putting religious freedom into an ever smaller box is exactly what this battle is all about. There are people of faith, Christians and Jews and Buddhists in this community who are supportive of all people who believe that love is not an exclusive, rather it is an inclusive right for all people.